Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Homegrown Happy Hour podcast. Again, we are doing it Zoom style tonight, and joining me is one of my good buddies, Mr. Donnie Bowling. From an undisclosed location. What's up, man? Secretive. <laughs> You've got to be right now. Yeah, I mean, it's th- th- there's, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world. But what's been going on in your world, man? Man, a lot has changed since the last time I spoke to you. Yeah, I, I was going to say, know, like, at the be- well, last time we talked was the beginning of all the craziness that was last year. And now it's, it's good to still see you're alive, that we're both alive after everything. Man, so last time I was on your show, remember I even called you uh, like three or four days later. I'm like, hey, man, I may have had COVID on your show. Yeah. Yeah, well, it turns out I did. Yeah, I did have COVID. Yeah. So that was yeah. a, a trip, man. To be honest, I almost forgot about that. Dang. How can you forget the main thing that's going on in this world? Dude, there's so – well, there's so much going on. Like, I mean, if, if people – well, that lately I've tried to kind of like tune myself out of the news and what's going on and, and try my best to focus on the stuff that like really matters in life. But, yeah. if, you, it, but if you just dive into the rabbit hole of everything, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in the world. It's, I don't see how people cannot keep up with everything. It blows my mind. It's so much stimuli that it kind of makes you wonder what is really going on. And the craziest thing was we were talking last time about uh, making conspiracies great again, and, and which is the greatest thing ever. But uh, remember we were talking about, man, they had just told us about UFOs. And like they said that they're going to come out with the information. And they did a few months ago. They finally said like, yeah, those videos that came out in 17 were real. We have no idea what they are. Don't know if they're interplanetary or extraterrestrial, et cetera. Yeah, so they've already told us that in the news, like on TV. My mom is messaging me. She's like, son, check this out. You like this. I'm like, mom, I already know this stuff's real like 20 years ago, you know? So they're like, they're throwing everything at us right now, dude. They're like, there's aliens. Watch out. You know? but just, a, just a few days ago, that's when they done the uh, they they presented it to I think it was the Senate or yeah. something something like that, and apparently it, it ain't aliens, but they still don't know what's going on. They probably didn't release all the details anyway because I don't think that it was a public thing. First of all, they don't know everything. They're you're looking at technology, and like most of the professionals are like. That technology, we don't have that. Someone else might, but we don't. And you're also talking to like some 70 year old people we elected into Congress. Like they don't know anything about Super Mario Brothers. You know, there's, so why are we listening to them? They have no idea. Dude, that's a cool beast shirt, dude. I thank you, man. Not a lot of people know about the beast. I just realized you're wearing that. I, I wrote it like before they shut it down, I guess. Like if or if it, if it well, shut that, it yeah, down. That was the son of the beast. This one's still um, going full force. But me and my wife, we, uh, They were doing a thing for the 40th anniversary and like the first hundred trains or something like that. The people on it got a free t-shirt. We drove to Cincinnati at like one o'clock in the morning and we're on the very first train for these shirts. Dude. So is is the beast, the beast is the one that's wooden, right? Yeah. Yeah. That that one, like get off of it. I'm I'm so little when I get off of it, like my hips hurt from hitting the sides. Yeah. And, And that's, I mean, like, 1979 was when that thing was created. It's, that's, it's, like, it's like a crazy Uber rod. Yeah, that's a perfect <laughs> way to describe it. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's still a lot of fun. That was uh, the first roller coaster that I ever got stuck on, too. Like, at the main top of the second drop on there. I can't, I can't remember. I only rode it once because it was, like, super hot. And I, I love roller coasters, man. Is that, is that the same place that has the, the red one? It's got like yeah, three, uh, three Diamondback. Top. Yeah, that one freaks me out, man. Like, uh, have you rode their drop tower? No, I'm afraid of that one because I have hair. Like, uh, oh. I, I always heard the stories of the, the girl who got her head ripped off or something. I don't know what happened exactly. I, th- I think she got scalped. But, like, oh. whenever you're riding Diamondback on that second drop, I remember, like, last time I was riding it, it was like a trip. Like, I'm going down it, and, like, there's coins floating near my face. I'm like, what was that? And it was like somebody's change falling out. And we're going at the same speed as it's going down. Like, we pass it. As it's falling, we're passing it. It's I'm like, crazy. There's the speed of gravity, I guess. 
It was a trip. That would have been like some Super Mario stuff, though. You're going on the track, and there's just coins all around you. Yeah, dude. Man, I know. Dude, I love Mario. I actually, I got this shirt at Walmart a few weeks ago because I went, I went to a birthday party. It was Mario theme, and you uh, would guess whose birthday it was, buddy. Who? Ernie. Oh. I, I knew that he'd jump into this conversation somehow. Just didn't. It, know it, he, he always finds his way in somehow, <laughs> some way. Bernie has a good taste, though. I mean, Mario themed birthday party is pretty cool. Yeah, he was in bed by like 7 p.m. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, well, you know, he's getting old, man. He's almost yeah. done his job, you know. Once but it I, happens. Have you played the uh, Mario game that you can get on your phone? Man, the only thing I play on my phone is crypto. I don't, I don't play nothing. And that's just watching numbers go up and down and mostly down. We are getting into like all the topics that we're <laughs> wanting to cover in like the first five minutes of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. This is how it goes, man. It's, it, for, it's, it's, it's all intertwined and I've realized it. For the people that missed the first podcast, we're going to go ahead and warn you this is going to be all over the place. Uh, so be ready. Yeah. But, well, let's go back to, first off, let's go back to the UFO stuff that you were, that we were just talking about. Uh, the, uh, the vehicles they're calling it. Yeah. So, so do you think it's aliens? So the people? I'm, I'm on the same plane as like how a lot of people have uh, reported those sightings that they go underwater. So mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's interplanetary. Like, and I, you, you, Wait, so, so you believe the, uh, the, uh, the, the inside earth theory or whatever they call it? Not inner earth, but I do believe maybe that there's like, if there is aliens, they're probably like inside of the earth too. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, like the whole, the moon is hollow theory and people, there's a base on it kind of thing. Like it only makes sense. I don't believe in like, I used to believe in the inner earth theory, like the whole James general James bird. And they went down to, Antarctica and there's a hole and they were Nazis and they said, don't ever come back. And that's why we can't really go to the Antarctic, the, the Arctic circle. Like there's a whole theory. Look at yeah. general James bird. Oh yeah. I've, he I've, done, I've dived down that rabbit hole. Did somebody even have like a map of it at one I, time? Um, I mean, if whoever that is that has the map of the inner earth, we need to holler at them. Like, it was, He's like, yeah, I got a map, dude. <laughs> well, it, like, it was just like a weird drawing that somebody had from hundreds of years ago. And I'm talking on my butt. I don't remember. Yeah. But, they, but there was like some type of weird map that they found with Antarctica that kind of supported that theory. Yeah. And like sure. you said, I mean, like, we're, we, I've never been there. I don't know what's there. See, and that, that's the whole thing. That's part of the, I guess, you know how conspiracies always have like a little bit of like wonder to them. That's what makes it a conspiracy. Like, yeah. you can't, like, I don't think that we as civilians can go there. So there's, like, no way to prove it. Exactly. Or disprove it. So it's like, oh, well, let's just hide a conspiracy in this. Like, that would be a smart way to do it. And that's how, like, the QAnon people do it. Like, they give you a little bit of truth. Like, yeah, we know that there is some bad people in this world. So now they're tying a new idea in, like, oh, they're selling kids on Wayfair. You know, like, so, but they yeah. give you a little bit of truth and then they spin this crazy idea in there. Yeah, yeah, you got to look for them little droplets, though, them little droplets of truth. That's Maybe. why like, I, I don't believe a lot of conspiracy theories, but I do believe there's a little grain of truth in all there, of them. There's fun and there's always the what if, you know? Yeah. A lot of people say that's the issue with the Alex Jones. Like, he is like, I'm sure you've watched Rogan, whatever he's on there. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. done like two episodes, maybe, or three. He's like, ha, ba, 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 ba. like, that's how I feel all the time anyway. But like, he says a few like real things. Like when he said like the frogs. Uh, frogs uh, are gay. Yeah, the frogs are homosexuals or whatever. Yeah. Well, and then he spins into this government conspiracy. There was a study done of runoff from a, like a corporation and there was frogs that were having those tendencies, but then like he gave this whole, you know, other story with it. So yeah. I think, I think if you can notice those, some conspiracies can be really fun. And of course, you know, like we're over here, like with the uh, Bigfoot riding Loch Ness monster, you know what I mean? Which I got these at the mountain muse. If you want to get some Bigfoot socks.
oh, I didn't know they had stuff like that. I've never been to that shop, but I've heard a lot of nice things. I got it off of Instagram, man. They Their Instagram, they sell on there too, and they'll ship to you. But I'm, but really, like, who knows? The UFO stuff, I don't know if it's aliens. Now, the, the whole hiding in the ocean thing, that would make sense to me because we've explored more of the moon than we have yeah, our yeah, yeah. ocean. Yeah, so we, for we, like something yeah. to hide in there, that makes sense to me. If aliens were real, that would make sense for them to hide in there. But I just don't know if that's really what's going on. I, but but there, there can only be two things that are going on. Either it's secret technology that our government or some government doesn't want us to know about, or it's aliens. That's the only yeah. two things that it can be. And I'll be honest with you, man, humans are stupid, so it's aliens. I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I, I, I mean... I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, we have a hard time with our phone chargers, you know? Yeah, we do. But they're like, but there are geniuses out there that. Uh, our main genius, Elon Musk, talks about a, a, a crypto coin that has no use case. So he, I don't think he's doing it smart. He ain't our main genius. Our main uh, geniuses are the ones in a lab somewhere at a university or secret location that we will never know the name of. I just refuse to believe. I think there's a greater chance it's extraterrestrials. Uh, and, and it's definitely like you remember we were talking about that rock that Omamba or whatever the name of it is. It's like oh, open one eight, that traveling through space. Yeah. And that one guy that university is trying to say, he's the only guy that's like saying it. He released a paper that showed once it got near our sun, it actually uh, increased. It's like it thrust it, like it moved. And everyone's like, don't know how that happened. He's like, it was controlled, you know? So there's this whole theory that that was like, um, like the mothership kind of deal and all these alien ships that were here, all those videos were from 2017. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to say that maybe those were reconnaissance missions, that those little Tic Tac things were drones. And that was the main thing coming back to collect them or the thing to come back to get their information. Like, you know, like we have the Hubble telescope stopped working like three or four days ago, by the way. So mm -hmm. we have things we sent out and it takes hours, days, weeks to get information back. If something on the other side of our galaxy or farther, farther away from our galaxy, you know, has information, maybe they also need to send things to come and get their transmissions. So there's that whole bombshell. But, yeah. And th they said that that thing was moving in a way that a satellite would move to collect information. Hmm. because they were saying that they could see reflections as it was turning and it had flat surfaces. Dang. I mean, who knows what, I, okay. So this kind of makes a little bit of sense to me. If that was the case, like what if they disguised a drone type device as an asteroid and sent it near us? So that yeah. way it looks like a big asteroid, but really like you're saying, but only like one smart person could see that accelerated. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would make sense. I mean, that would be like a smart thing to do is to. Like, well, we send hunters into the woods and, you know, in camouflage. Mm. We also have decoy geese that we hunt, you know, duck with or whatever, whatever they do, you know, the fake thing. Mm. Uh, we, it's very, it's very much the basic idea of being hidden. Yeah. See, see that would, that, that would kind of make sense to me makes more sense than there's a smart human being that's tricked everybody else, you know? Cause like when you talk about it, man, we've got people who have billions of dollars in assets and uh, as many uh, opportunities as they want to develop things. And instead they're spending all their money digging a hole up in some Island and they're putting it on TV. Yeah. But, but, you know I mean? but man, they there, are, there are secret them. things going on though, that we just, we, we don't know about and probably will never, know about yeah yeah but they're interviewing professional physicists who are saying that is not possible not yeah. that we can't do it like not like we can't they're saying that is hundreds of years past our technology yeah like, but, we haven't had that technology yet but that but, but they also had the same physicists and people back in the day that were trying to debunk the blackbird and stuff like that whenever all that was going on I mean, you're talking like the difference in 
in a glass of water in a in a bang energy technology man that was like they had they didn't have like good cameras then yeah you know? but 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 the technology i mean like look at this like that okay so when when did the automobile come around uh 40s 30s i don't know i have no clue yeah, I'm, I'm horrible with history man beginning of the 1900s yeah let's say that and, and within 50 years we were already supposedly already on a different planet the moon and with technology nowadays like if it progressed that much all the way back then imagine what they can do in just the span of five years nowadays oh i agree and and i think that maybe the people that they're talking to would agree that if it was possible they'd say it was possible but i have no, you know the, the these are people who are like, like the one dude who said that that asteroid was possibly and he believes for a fact it was not an asteroid you know like these people are like study their whole lives man on one thing and then people discredit them you know it's isn't that kind of crazy to think about it's like the dude who uh said he worked at area 51 and they've discredited him for 30 years now they're saying actually you know what some of the stuff he's saying yeah he's right we had that technology yeah. they cannot tell the truth See, no one's coming forward well, that's why I think they're trying to discredit like everything going on with putting these so-called professionals and scientists and physicists on TV saying like, oh, it's not possible when they know in their mind. Yeah, it is. They just are giving yeah. money to lie. Yeah, but we don't have to rely on just TV. We can rely on YouTube. We can rely on any form of medium that they can give us themselves. So this isn't a curation. This is them trying to cover their back because we already know the information now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, and I hate bringing it again. It's like crypto. It's like crypto has taken over in the last 10 years to where now the government can't stop it, even if they want to stop it. So now they've got to either adapt to it or they've got to, you know, they can't, it's just like the aliens. They, they can't go and say they don't exist because we've got three videos that they didn't release. They actually just said, okay, yeah, you guys caught it. You got it. We don't know what that is. But Call along for Blink-182 is like, I told you, <laughs> and banned to show you aliens. Well, well, Tom, shout out to him, man. He like wasn't he the one that kind of got these he videos? Was part of it, he was in that. Uh, it's like Star Academy or something. It was his decision. Like he contacted one of the main guys that worked in the CIA or whatever, and he was disgruntled and wanted to help. But then they started interviewing these people from those sightings. Yeah, I mean, whether it's human technology that either we or another powerful country has created, or if it's aliens, like despite all of that, you still have, like people have to say like, it's some of the craziest stuff that we've ever seen in our lives because there's that one video of that one, I don't, can't call it a plane, that one arrow device, whatever UFO. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it goes from like 85,000 feet to a foot above sea level like yeah. that and just and stops on a dime you know and perfectly that wasn't even the crazy part of the story the crazy part of the story is whenever the woman uh the pilot she said her captain went towards it yeah and they were going to reconvene and meet back up at a certain point the device was at the point that they were supposed to meet at somehow yeah well, 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 well yeah well it disappeared from whenever he's doing the nosedive and yeah. it showed up like on a battleship radar 60 miles away where they were supposed to meet at though yeah but but in within a few seconds what a trip dude. yeah so so i mean whether it's secret technology or aliens whatever it is it's crazy i mean like that's that's right on the edge of time travel oh man you think that they were saying that about the beast back in 79 oh yeah yeah, but but, <laughs> I, but who knows, man? It, it's it's really fascinating, and it's also fascinating the way that they're going about it. Because like, even the, even the government saying like we don't know what it is. They may know, but I I just I I don't remember a time in history that UFOs have gotten this much publicity. Probably since like Roswell, you know, because everything in between uh, here and then. It's all been just stuff to discredit it. But now yeah. you even have these big national media, uh, whoever's covering it, they're all saying the same thing. Like, what is this? There's nobody calling anybody crazy anymore. Well, what is that saying? I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to botch it, but it's like, 
they deny it, they fight it, and then they join it. That's the way of disclosure. And that's the way of everything, including technology when it comes to – what up, kitty? The, that's all the stuff, you know, like with oh, – with like government trying to uh, – like adopt technology and you know, like they at first humans fight things then they deny it and then they end up having to join it at some point. But like, man, there's other countries for years and years have been admitting that there is things they don't know about. Yeah. You know, we're not saying it's aliens. Like this could have been humans way before our time that have just said, Hey dude, it's way too hot up there. We're, we're down here like underground. But, but there's also been like, I mean, this isn't the only big event that has happened in our history. It's just yeah. the one event that was actually nationally covered so big that everybody realized. But uh, people can look this up because I'm not smart enough to try to remember everything. But there was a bunch of incidents that happened in Arizona. Yeah, Phoenix back in the 90s. Yeah, the Phoenix. The triangles. Yeah. yeah, those were all filmed too, man. Yeah, that there were so many awful people, even the mayor at the time, he yep. uh, had to go on TV the next day to uh, discredit it because that's what he was told to do. And yep. then like 10 years or so many years later, after he resigned from his position, he'd done another interview and told the story about how he was forced to say that that was a weather balloon or whatever he said that it yeah, was. Yeah, flares or something. I watched the same thing, dude. Yeah. yeah and, and him and his son went after the lights to see like what it was. So the same guy that discredited it a few years later, done, a, same, done another interview saying like, actually, we don't know what that was. That was crazy. But also – Back in the 1950s or 40s, I think it was, there was like an alien invasion in Washington, D.C. that they were calling it. Where yeah, the and they said the, the, the president met with them. Well, well, no, well this was like, there was like dozens of lights that popped above the White House. Yeah. And there was like, I mean, plenty of pictures at the time because there wasn't any video. Plenty of pictures at the time. And from, to my knowledge, they like, had fighter jets going after them and they would just disappear. And they like still to this day, they don't know what was going on there. There was just dozens of these lights showing up above the white house. Man, I told you about that story about the elderly man I took care of last time. So if you want to catch up on the last episode, I think you probably have it somewhere. Yeah. You can get or something. But the story I told you about the guy that was, I took care of, he was in his eighties and he passed away a few years ago. But he told me back when he worked in the Air Force, they had the same kind of issue with, like, these bogeys that they had no idea what they were. And they were, you know, relying on vision and sight and flying and trying to chase these things that were way quicker than them. And they had no idea what they were. And they would appear on radar and then disappear. But see, like, yeah, it, lie. like it has no reason to lie. Do you think that it could also be just other powerful countries, though? I wouldn't say countries. I'd say maybe powerful people because, you know, there's shadow governments. Like there's probably like five or 10 of the really most richest people. And they're like, yeah, let's not share this with anybody. You know? True. I mean, well, look how much Elon and Jeff is doing whenever it comes to space. I mean, yeah. Elon Musk money. is more than NASA. You can throw money at it, you know, and the whole Elon thing, like he, he bought a company, you know, he bought it from two other people. I'm yeah. sure you saw that yeah. uh, anonymous video they posted about him a few months ago. But, but still, I mean, like this, you have one man and his company that is doing more than a government funded agency whenever it comes to space. It's because the government took away the funding though. Well, yeah, yeah. But I'm, but, like, but, like, but to your point though, it could be just somebody in the shadows that is able just to do whatever they want to do. Cause they got the Iron money. Man, dude, Iron Man. Yeah. What's his name? Robert Downey Jr. It's him. Who knows, man? Like it, that we are living in a day and age where, Iron Man and real life super villains, like all that, it's possible. I love it. I don't know. <laughs> well, like, how long until we do get that actual super villain? You know, that one guy that has the button, and I bet it's going to be Jeff Bezos. He looks like he would be a good one. Like, not saying he's a bad guy, but he just looks like a super villain. It's, it's just the bald head. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. What, what's the uh, uh, Superman? What's the bald head guy's name? That's what, uh, Lex Luthor. Yeah. yeah, that's it, dude. That's it, Bezos. He's like going to he's going to space soon. Like, I've seen that with his brother, and I think they're trying to find somebody else to go. With I think him. somebody is paying to do it. I hope it's Lance Bass from the 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 Insane guys. Remember, he wanted to do it so bad. 
back in like the late 2000s, like 2010 or something. How do you think they're going to go about telling us aliens are real? They're already doing it. It's slowly starting. See, uh, that, that's what I think is might be going on, too, that they're easing everybody into it. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's why they announced it back in March of last year was because there was so much going on with COVID and everything. They were like, well, I guess if any time, this is the best time because they're not going to be paying attention right now, you know. But people paid attention. I mean, it, it was, it, it's, it's cool how everybody's still latched onto it, but you still have a lot of people that are naive. And well, see, well, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that I look at both sides. Honestly, I think that it's more us or somebody with some really crazy technology. But like I said earlier, the only, the only other thing that it can be is aliens. But there's still, it surprises me how many people don't believe in aliens or that other life exists elsewhere at least well i mean if we have we have found organisms that live in like volcanic water yep. so and that's like temperatures that you know me and you could not live in but a small little cell can so. yeah but i mean our, our sun is a star you look up in the sky you see millions billions of stars There's more than that you can't even see exactly in a ever of a forever expanding universe i love it i don't see how people can be so naive to think that we are the only ones it don't make sense you, you know why it's the same reason that we allow other things to happen is because we're so uh we're so caught up in having to go to work every day that's why like during the pandemic all of this stuff has blown up so big is because people are bored and have time. If they went back to work, we wouldn't be having all these arguments online. We wouldn't be having all these trolls. Like we already had enough trolls before, but yeah. now like the venom is so much more powerful because it, it is in larger vials. You know what I'm saying? Because people are at home, not, not being, uh, you know, a good little person worker, go to work, go to work, go to work. Don't pay attention. Go, don't pay attention. You know, it's like a bug's life. They're all going to work. And then that one bug's like, I want to go away from this leaf and go down there. And then you have a whole new Pixar movie, yeah. you know, except now we have a whole collective group of humans that have free time, you know, and that's why we probably, it's, it's probably happening. Yeah. Plus social, social media increases our uh, availability of information, you know. And, and they, like, I mean, if, the aliens are already here, like some people would say. I would see them being in positions of power, like government. A lot of people believe so. You know, you've got the greys, you've got all the different types of aliens people believe in, too. Like, there's some good ones and bad ones. That's when I said, like, the whole Washington thing. Apparently, I forgot what president it was, but you can look into, like, you can Google president meets aliens. But apparently, back a long time ago in the 30s or 40s, there was a meeting, and you know, there was some basically is like, Hey, we're, we're here. We've been here. Uh, we're going to let you guys continue. Uh, these are our terms. Like you can agree to them. And I think, you know, there's, there's good and bad. That's why like there's ones who abduct people and there's ones who don't. It's like, there's a whole, there, like when you look at people's uh, uh, recounts of aliens, there's different types. You got the long, you know, the big tall gray, the one that you see in, in your bedroom, you know, taking you away. And then you see the small ones who are like looking in your window. Like there's different types yeah. if there is, because if there is something else, there must be more of something else. So mm -hmm. that one makes more sense. And they probably are among us, not like lizard people, but I guess that would be what the lizard people are is I disguised, you know, agents. I, I, anything is possible. Like, man, my mind is wide open to any possibility in life. I wish I could be one of those people that like, they know they uh, the whole world figured out and their opinion is right. Everybody's wrong, but I'm all ears. I mean, I, I can get behind anything almost like you, you just, you don't know we're, we're dumb. We're stupid. We don't know. We're so naive to how the world works, even with how advanced we are today. We don't know. But again, we're, we're only as advanced as the top percent of people who are free from work. True. But I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get a what? What, what are they calling that? The uh, global income, and we can all just not have to work anymore. Who knows? Oh, you're talking about like where they give us money to just to live? 
yeah, basically. That might be how it goes one day. But but also, like, I mean, going back. Prices of goods, that would be the same thing. Yeah. But going back through history, I mean, even other ancient civilizations and collectives talk about being visited by sky people. Yeah, yeah. I love the ancient alien astronaut theory. Yeah, yeah and, and there's plenty of them out there. We might just be a weird test experiment, man. I, I think so. Well, I can see us doing that, you know, like how we watch insects and bugs and other species here on this earth. I yeah. can see another whatever doing the same thing with us. Like, it's like a big Truman um, Show thing. It's, it's the observation theory, which a lot of people talk about. And if you look into it, a lot of the sightings happened right around the time we split the atom. Because we weren't a threat to any, if there was other people out there in other worlds, we weren't a threat. We were just that little ant hill over here. Like, check them out. They're building something new today. Well, a lot of those sightings started happening around government facilities, around nuclear stuff. And the moment we split the atom, I'm sure they were like, oh, hold on a second. They're doing some. Let's go check this out. And a lot of people believe that they've been watching us and they intervene at moments whenever we need it such as they're about to blow themselves up and maybe be a threat to us. Let's go stop them. There's a video of like a rocket. And if you look, there's like something that flying around the top of it. And apparently it shoots a beam of light that disables this thing. You can look at it. Up. It's crazy. Like it's, and then you've got this, the sightings where people are talking, like we're working at a high clearance government facility. And one night something came over and all of our power went out. It's like all this is like show of power saying, hey, we can control you. Watch out. Like, so a lot of people believe that the observation theory is a bigger uh, probability. It's again, it's like this is the whole space, everything. And there's those ants. We're just ants. And those ants are going to do something, you know, like, let's go stop them, you know. Wait, going back through any ancient text, whether it's religious or not, it all talks about like being visited or being placed here on earth. I mean, it's, they might have knew something, some type of lost knowledge out there. Like I said, my mind is wide open. I'm just, I, I'm, I don't settle with anything. I mean, I like hearing ideas and I like hearing theories and I love talking about them, but I never say that's it. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I don't know. And nobody. Yeah, it, it, this is a good segue. So uh, we're coming out with a music video for, so this next record I'm putting out, we have a, my buddy, Joe, uh, shout out to Joe Hinkle. He's doing this video and it's his idea. And the song is called galaxy. And it talks about like religion. It talks about like a whole bunch of stuff, but basically at the end of it, it says I'm, I'm better off living out with the other stars, with the other stars. And he's like got this whole concept of a guy, me, who's living his life, not paying attention to anything, just going to work, coming home, doing this, doing that. But in the background, you see all these signs and all these messages and stuff. And basically at the end, I get abducted. And it's not even aliens. See, this is the trip. It's me from the future coming back mm -hmm. to try to save myself and be like, pay attention, dude. You know, so that that's to me, that would be a plausible theory of what these things are, too, is it's us, not not another Donnie or another you, but like maybe our kind who has left this place. And then now they're like coming back to be like, hey, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Like, listen to us. You know, it could be just the big brother concept, not like the government big brother, but like your big brother wants to help you. You know, yeah. and it could and be that this well. guy's cutting grass out here. He hears me. He's like. Got to ruin this conspiracy. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all you good. You know what we're doing. But, I, and really, man, like, they know everything nowadays. I have friends that, like, try to live off the grid. And I tell them all the time, like, you're wasting your time. Like, they've won. The powers that be, they win. They're, they're good. That's why, like, I love conspiracy theories, but I've almost, like, given up. Well, I have given up hope that anything is ever going to be done or said or anything like that uh I, I, don't be so don't be so down on yourself man come on stick with the, with the script I, bro i, I think, I, I think I, it's changing i love it but they just no, 
I mean, maybe eventually they're going to let us know, let, let us in on some stuff, but I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Like, is whenever the UFO stuff started happening, I got – well, first off, it started with Epstein. And I'm like, man, I've been talking about this for years, and they finally yeah. got yep. their foot in the door, and all the evil, powerful people are going to go down. He killed himself. Nothing ever happened. Well, just, just because of his death doesn't mean it's over. I mean, you still had that jizzling chick. She's in prison. I mean, there's still, there's still going to be things come of that. I'm, I'm not – unfortunately, we don't live in a hang them tomorrow situation, you know. So yeah. I, I think our government is – I think there's more to that story, and it's coming out. If you, if you remember, you know, and this is big. I don't know if you pay attention in the last couple of weeks, but this ties into the crypto world too, but – John McAfee? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Uh, So listen, let me just give you one sentence that's going to just blow your mind. There is a guy one time who had access to every computer, every computer with his anti-malware stuff. Mm -hmm. And then this guy goes on the run for tax evasion. About the same time, all this Epstein stuff comes out. So you think somebody may have a lot of computers information that would confer and give information on this other story that's huge. I mean, you took down the prince of, of Europe. You know, that guy had to step away because he was involved in it. All these other people, too. Yeah. I mean, let's get real. The guy was driving around, like, I don't know what country, Aruba or something, with his wife on a boat, and they had a shotgun. And here's the crazy thing. The, the cops, the government couldn't take him down because he said, if you kill me, all this information is going to get leaked, dude. How crazy is that? And he just died. He first, killed himself too and said, I won't Epstein myself. He, okay. For, for, the, for the people that don't know who this John McAfee guy is, I, it, it's really hard to explain it to, to those people. Just what I say is do your research, but yeah. to what you just said there, this man literally had the word whacked tattooed on him. Yeah, he was selling uh, cryptocurrency though. That was that that was the thing. But 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 uh, but oh, I I I'd done a little bit of research on this dude the other day. That's another thing that kind of sucked me back into this world. But uh, okay, so the guy had whack tattooed on him, so that way if he was to ever end up suicide, that people would would know that he didn't do it, that he was actually killed. That's the reason he got that tattooed on him in the first place. But also, Adult Swim of all people, they done an interview with that guy a few years ago. I think it was in 2019. And he was talking about uh, being on the run and all that and how he never talked about why he done that. And that's when he started talking about how he uh, donated all of these computers to these government agencies with this spyware uh, stuff on it. And he said that he was trying to find something about uh, the uh, legal proceedings that were against him. And he didn't find anything, but instead he found everything. <laughs> he found two. He found out that two officials within our government. I can't remember the exact titles. I don't want to butcher it. But he found out that two of our government officials. One of them was the biggest arms dealer in South America or something like that, and one of the others was the world's biggest human trafficker. Yeah, He said that in an interview with Adult Swim. And even they said like, well, we don't want to end up dead, so we're probably not going to air that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, okay, that's fine. And for some reason, they still aired it. And I mean, that, yeah. To, it's, and guess what? The day that he was supposed to be extradited back to the United States, he died in a, in a, in a prison. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's crazy to think that even the donation of computers, this guy invented McAfee antivirus wear, which was one of the first antivirus wares we ever had in the nineties. It was on every computer. Yeah. And, and I mean, let's be I, real. This guy, this guy was drug fueled crazy at the end. And, and you can see him like doing cocaine and like having like multiple firearms and like probably discrediting his genius that he is. And a lot of people have came out and said that like, RIP, you know, later in his life, he became the monster before he was a very intelligent person, like many of the programmers and creators. But, you know, 
this guy had access to every computer probably ever made that had that Windows antivirus, man. The well, one he never updated. <laughs> yeah, but but also I think you can just kind of tell when people are full of it. I mean, maybe I'm just not good at reading people, but whenever he's talking about those two government officials, it didn't seem like he was just on drugs talking crazy. Like, he seemed very well – Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, like, just like, like, yeah, like that was the truth. Like I believed that whenever he said it. Yeah. And there's yeah. a few other wild things within that interview, of course, but that one part kind of just like you could tell by the look on his face that that wasn't a joke. Yeah. That's what most people say. though, was like, don't let all those other things discredit the thing that should be credited. Just, be just because Donnie is a crazy guy does not mean that Donnie is not better at this or a good this you know what i'm saying yeah, like, like like we were talking about man, those seeds of truth dude exactly i get it like that's it's that's the crazy thing and it's i don't know it's it's so hard to think that there's still maybe more to that story that's why i said don't give up yet because apparently there was supposed to be this dead man's key or whatever the, the chest you know even snowden talked about he had one or uh, assange he had one. These are all people that the government's trying to take down. And there's a reason they're trying to take Snowden down because he had access to a computer that had information on it that yeah. he wasn't supposed to get about, you know, the 9-11, the Patriot Act and how we're spied on. That was detrimental towards our government because they were overreaching and they shouldn't have been. McAfee has information on people. I'm like, they took down well, Epstein. Like, yeah, he's a bad person, but he had connections to everyone. They're trying, these are the people that if you were watching a movie, these are the ones that they got to kill to keep the secret. Yeah. But, but, but the thing is, man, like just in my opinion, like they'll kill them, but they, they do it every day. There's more coming out, man. The, the day he died, apparently a lot of stuff was triggered on the Ethereum chain. So I think, I think something's, something's brewing. Well, I think eventually it's going to get to the point where it's difficult for them to keep information away from people. That, and that's it, the blockchain. Like, you know, they can do it by the, yeah, well, they can do it by discrediting them, but really that's all they got going because that's why the government had to come out and talk about the UFOs because yeah. the videos were out there, millions of people have seen them, and they, they just couldn't keep it away. Uh, yeah, exactly. That, that makes me so sad because that means they probably had Bigfoot somewhere in a cage because, like, we totally got better videos by now. And that's, like, the thing that got me into it all was – the allure of Sasquatch, you know. Well, well, Bigfoot, that's always fascinated me because, I mean, that going back to, you know, Indians and some yep. of their tales and other ancient tribes across the world, they talk about this big, hairy type like human being. But to me, like, that may be its own creature or that may be just a human subspecies that just went extinct over the years oh much agreed and even that itself is still uh got some kind of a lore to it yeah I, whether I, or not bigfoot is like a magical you know bear it it wouldn't matter what it is it's something we don't know and again that's the same thing as ufos it doesn't matter if they are if they're humans or if they're not we just want to know how they got that yeah. like you know well they, that is well they've found a, like giant bones before yeah. like, like it, it's a not, not a common known fact, but it is a fact that some type of human giant existed. At out West, West. I, I think, I think it, like out in the deserts, you can see some of those. I think they found some bones. Yeah. And even in other parts of the world as well. Peru. And, well, I mean, we, we already know some type of human subspecies that have existed through time and imagine all the ones that have been forgotten. Did you did you see the thing that came out like two days ago or three days ago about that jaw the jaw boneless uh, humanoid they found? Uh -uh. Yeah, here, talk for a second. Let me find this article. I'm, I'm gonna read you just the, the headline real quick. I sent it to somebody the day because it just came out. Like, I mean, I, like I thought of you about it too. Who I really like? Who knows? I just think that the world is humongous. We we're so still like we're very naive to how everything works. Me and uh, some of my buddies on the podcast last week were talking about this, how Gebekli Tepe, the oldest known civilization in the world, yeah. was only found in like 1995. And there's more there too that haven't, 
there's more there that they haven't even gotten under. Yeah, yeah, there's still a lot to dig, and it takes quite a while to dig. So we're going to be finding out stuff about that place for a hundred years to come. Here but, you go. Dragon Man. Look that up later. It's supposed right. to be. They found a cranium in China that is at least 146,000 years old. Uh, apparently, it's going to change the way we believe of uh, human uh, evolution. It's like, I don't know why they call it Dragon Man. It's something to do with their, like, maybe a jawbone was missing or something. Like, there is no jawbone. I don't know what it would be, though. I think maybe we developed it. But anyway, check that out. Dragon Man. That was like three or four days ago, dude. I just can't wait until the time machine, man. I don't know if I want to use it. There's so much I want to forget, you know? Yeah. But it, it would, like, I just wish that we could know what has happened through history. But that's why it's always fascinating me because it's a forever guessing game. We'll never know. Yeah. I, well, you know, it'd be boring if you knew everything anyway. Exactly. Do you think McAfee is uh, related to everything? Well, I know he, he done a lot of stuff. But it's kind of weird, though, that uh, he killed himself whenever cryptocurrency became so popular. Like, you this, ready for this? Well, this year and last year, I've heard more about cryptocurrency than I ever have in my entire life. And even in that interview that I was talking about they done with Adult Swim, yeah. I can't say what he was going to do if Bitcoin didn't reach a million uh, yeah, yeah, dollars. Yeah, something crazy. Yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, he was talking about that like, like if it wasn't a thing by the end of 2020. All of a sudden, that's all you hear about, and McAfee has killed himself. So there's a reason for it. So here it goes, man. The whole whack thing on his arm, the money sign beside of it, if you, if you put a money sign beside a few letters on Twitter, you'll see crypto. So that was him selling that on Ethereum. So I, don't, I know like he played that into the fact that if I do get killed, I didn't do it. But whack was actually a coin on the ERC twenty chain, so he made money off of that. That was that was advertising. But the whole concept of him dying, and there was another prominent man in crypto who died like four about four or five days ago. He drowned, and he owned over a million Bitcoin. And there's only twenty one million Bitcoins in the world ever ever will be made. So that was a huge hit in the last four months. There's been a huge attack on cryptocurrencies because, like I said earlier, I don't want to get too far into it, but they can't stop it now. Uh, the governments can't stop it so they can discredit it. And what they're doing is it's called FUD, it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They try to tell you, like just type in JP Morgan Bitcoin today and scroll through the news every other day. It's bad. We just bought a million of them, though. We're going to start offering it to our people. It's bad. This government accepts it. This government says, no, it's a ban. Then four years later, this government accepts it. This is all them trying to drive the price down so they can buy it because too many people bought it 10 years ago and there's going to be a huge, huge shift in wealth and power that this is the only time in our existence that people will be able to get one up on a government. And a lot of governments right now have more power than other big governments and that's why this, this is a big conspiracy right now. And it's all these other coins, like the meme coins don't matter. That's all just, you know, just trying to distract you from Ethereum and Bitcoin, the main ones that will be used. And it is a world currency. And we're seeing adoption in the last six months. And now you're seeing El Salvador, who's like, hey, we're going to adopt it, make it legal tender. And yeah. people are like, oh, Elon, say something about the, about the power grid and how bad it is for the economy, blah, blah, or whatever, you know, for um, the world. But yet Elon mines lithium batteries and sells you that stuff on government stipend. You know, all these people are actors, man. And, and the crazy thing is El Salvador's president's been pushed hard by the world banks because they're going to lose power. Mm -hmm. I described it to somebody the other day, like, you remember this because we're about the same age, I believe. And, at, when we we grew up, we started getting debit cards, and we were that was it. We were we were introduced to it. Your mom and my mom, or your dad, and my dad weren't. Whenever they started that stuff, they were like, and they still might be that way. No, I'm not going to the ATM. It's going to take two fifty. Me and you just think it's normal. They're taking our money, and they've made it normal that we don't care that they take our money for keeping our money. I'm gonna give you my money, and then you're gonna charge me to use it. And it's insane. 
So now this is the moment where we are doing peer-to-peer -peer transactions through a blockchain, which is transparent, meaning you can see if I sent you money. I can, I can send you something and everyone else can see it too because it's on a public ledger. The government doesn't like that because the government prints money and they try to hide it every other way they can so they don't create inflation, which makes people, you know, our, our dollar just dropped 4% last month. So yeah. now we, we can't pay for things. You know, what, for, we lost power, purchasing power, and we're still working the same amount, maybe more. So yep. the governments don't like that stuff because they can't hide it because it's transparent. Yeah, well, like you said, that they, well, they can't control cryptocurrency is why I think the government is so against it. Well, they're against because of transparency, though. That's well, the thing. Well, yeah, well, yeah that too. But, I, well, the transparency, like, you can do whatever you want to if you have Bitcoin. There's no taxes that are connected to it. Well, there we do pay taxes. You, you, you do get KYC'd. So they do make money from you. It's capital gains. Mm, so not. they like it, but they don't like how it's been integrated. Because, like, we will always need the dollar and the yuan, the yuan and all the other currencies because we need to off-road and use that in wherever we're at to purchase things mm -hmm. but they don't like that because say like they would rather us put all our money into paper and rocks gold and silver you know yeah. there was a there was a gold mountain found in like Colombia or the congos like two months ago it's it's not that valuable of a precious metal yeah. and it's 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 such a crazy thing when you think about it like that they are losing control. They're losing all this money that they would be getting from us by saying, don't do it. It's not good. Like even uh, Warren Buffett was saying it was against it for years. And now his, he didn't buy any last week, but his company bought half a billion dollars into a company that does custodial services with Bitcoin, but he's against it. Yeah. You know? See, Follow I, I, the money, man. I think they know what's going on. I mean, well, we we already know that they meet in these like like Bohemian Grove and places like that. I mean, like everybody and everything is connected, and they plan out how everything's going to go. But I could also see a future where you know just real what t currency today with the paper bills ain't a thing, and then it's all cryptocurrency we're go we're living in a world that's going digital well we're using venmo i'm surprised they let us do that yeah uh, yeah I, I am too but really like everything's going digital we have virtual reality we have virtual money we NFT. live in these virtual worlds yeah nfts are going to be the new thing too it's our they've been out for a couple of years but a lot of people don't understand them yet but nfts will be pretty big in the crypto and just normal world. What is an NFT? So it's a non-fungible token. So basically the way I look at it and it can be used in many applications, but the application that I, and I don't know everything about crypto. So if anybody out there wants to comment and correct me, thank you. I'd like to know more. You can never know enough. Um, but the way the application that I understand it and the best way I can describe it would be it's a letter of authenticity. So example one would be, uh, as a musician, I can, I can sell a deluxe copy of my next record as an NFT. So basically I'll, I'll put it out there in form and there's 10 of them and 10 people buy it. And I send all 10 people the, those tokens, the, on the ledger, like I can send you the, the, the Bitcoin or whatever, whatever coin you want to use for that token. So that whenever, if you ever want to resell it, people can't be like, well, that's not the real Mona Lisa. It's like, well, yeah, it is, because here's the proof, and I can send this to you. And here's the ledger that shows it that it's proof. It's like cutting out the guy that appraises everything and says, yeah, that's a real thing. No, I can show you proof there's only 10 of them, and it's transparent. So it's just like the people who leave their tag on their hat or the rich people who you know, only buy real, uh, you know, name a type of purse or whatever, you know, because they know it's not the fake one. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to some because they think, why would you want a digital copy of something? Well, you also can get a physical copy with it. It's an accompaniment. It isn't just, you know, some people do buy like skins on Call of Duty. Why would you do that? Because you want to use it. It's a fun thing that's part of a game. Same concept. 
you know, except for it can either accompany a physical thing as a letter of authenticity, knowing that it's the real deal, or it could be used as a, like a augmented reality, like Pokemon Go or any, any RPG game you ever played as a kid. Like, do you ever play those games like World of Warcraft or something? Yeah. You can buy items. Same concept. You want to buy something that's not real, but you're going to use it in an application that is real. So like, NFTs are going to be huge. And it's a good way for an artist to get more money that they deserve versus the record label gets that money. You know, it's like, it's almost like putting the power back into the whole concept of crypto is putting your money and your power back into you and me, not them. Same idea with like NFT with artists, you know, and there's other applications too. That makes sense, man. I yeah. It's, it's, it's stupid when you look at it without the, with the description, but cause again, you're like, why would I want uh, to buy the real Mona Lisa really when I can just print off a copy on my phone and hang it up. Well, it's to prove that you're a bad person and you, and you've got the real one, yeah. you know? Well, when it comes to materialistic items, that's a lot of people's thing that they just want to show off. Yeah. I was never the kind that wanted a, a Ferrari. I, you know, I don't want a really nice, I bought this shirt at Walmart. Like, you know, when, whenever you were a kid, you thought of like having the best of everything because it showed a, some type of, uh, status symbol you know and that's a big thing in the world you know people want the real air jordans they want the real charizard you know or they you know what i'm saying so like yeah. it's it's a way to tag those things and make them authentic so bernie's the one that got you into all this cryptocurrency stuff oh here we go dude <laughs> where is bernie that's the where, name. where is bernie that's the title of, he's an, i think listen i think this is the real conspiracy man i think he was planted yeah Back in two, well, I met him in 06. We've been friends ever since, and I think this is the long game. I think he was, a, he was an agent. He, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm purely making this up because like, I was hanging out his party oh, years ago. Oh, but uh, years and years ago, he said, we should buy some Bitcoin, and I never did, never thought about it. And about seven, eight months ago, he messaged me and said, hey, man, you should try to get into Bitcoin. It's down. I bought a bunch, and I, I made a lot of money. And now it's all I do. He doesn't own any. I'm like, oh man, he was he was planted here. He never got in it. Oh, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm thinking he was planted to slow down my productivity. Mm -hmm. Or maybe to speed it up with all the money that you're making. Oh man, he might be an alien that's here. I'm the ant hill, and he's like, "Hey, ant hill, I'm gonna show you how to build a better ant hill." Exactly, like you said, like the people coming down to help you out. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, this is too much for I me. I can see him being an alien. Like he looks like oh, a normal dude. dude, but he also doesn't look like a normal dude. Well, he's not a normal guy. He's not. He's not normal. You know. No, he's a, <laughs> he is a living, he moved to downtown Cincinnati, got another job, and he's doing some analytical stuff. That's what he wants you to think. <sighs> You're right. And with a name like Bernie, too, I mean, like, there's not many of them. I know, I know, man. It's, you know, it's, he, uh... That is a weird thing, though. Like, why did he get you into it and never get himself into it? That's what I'm saying, man. Never asked him? Well, I'm, he, he had some like 10 years ago for a different reason, buying random stuff on there, but when the, you could buy things on the internet, but uh, yeah, he doesn't have any in it. And I, I know he doesn't have any because he had a hard time transferring it to me when I bought it. So it was like, and by the way, I did not buy any from him. I couldn't KYC my, uh, my license was expired. So he had to buy it and then send it to me. Just for anybody out there who was going to try to bust us with the feds. But uh, no, he's, he's still uh, helping me with some music stuff. We're, we're working on uh, a rollout on some new, some new music and trying to figure out what the new trends are and how we're going to release it. Well, I love the stuff that you're doing with Brett, and I love the stuff that uh, you're doing yeah. with Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. Those are all great. That, I forgot all that happened since last time we talked, dude. It's been yeah, I really a like year it. or so, but a lot's happened. So, so like, what got you and the uh, the Brett guy? Brett Higgins? That's his yeah, name? yeah, yeah. Brett, oh, man, he's he's a magical guy. How'd y'all uh, team up, man? 
So my first record, my first full length record, it's online. It's called About Time. There's a song called Shadow. It's so funny because like right here it is, Shadow. It says it on this paper. Um, Shadow, I wrote it, and I originally wrote it for Brother Smith, and I was going to pitch it to them because it sounded like Brother Smith. It didn't sound like my usual. And I never heard anything back, and I was like, okay, well. And then one day I thought I heard Brett singing, and I was like, man, he could do this, you know, this song with me. So I just called him up, and we we did the song together, and a year passed, and every time he'd show up at a show I was at, I'd be like, you want to come sing it with me? And then we just kind of developed a friendship around COVID. Um, he's a super positive guy. He's always dancing, always moving, and I'm like, we're like yin and yang. Like, if you know me versus what I show you in real life, I'm like, method- like very methodic and like controlled to an extent uh, for my, my music sense. And he brings a different thing out of me. So we, we write songs and play together and we, man, we've got probably 50,000 cover songs we play on and we never play them the same. It's always fun and organic. And it's just like a, it's just a really fun thing. Uh, it's, it's art, I guess. Let's put it that way. Have you ever thought about like doing like a duo group or anything? That's basically what we are. We, uh, we, we, we didn't want to take from our names because, like, you know, it's hard to get fans to move from one brand to another. So, like, we are just called Featuring Brett Higgins and Donnie Bowling, and it looks just like F-E-A-T, you know, like Featuring huh? Brett Higgins and Donnie Bowling and, like, one kind of, like, card-looking logo. We, we, we've we been writing a lot of songs together, and, again, we do perform a lot together, but we have separate things, too, you know. Yeah, he, I've uh, never got a chance to talk with him or meet him or anything like that. And I just, I've seen the stuff that he's done with you. And the man has an incredible voice. And you can just tell the chemistry that y'all got, man. It's, it's, it's so natural and it's there. Like, you're, y'all are not faking it. You can just tell, like, y'all are really having a good time with it. And I, I think, like, whenever you watch somebody else having a good time, it kind of makes you feel good. I love watching y'all's videos. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, and that's that's really what it is. We're just having fun, and it's been a big therapy for me because I'm a perfectionist at performance and music, and again, we never do it the same. So it's yeah. it's almost like it it it's developed me, and it's like I don't know. It it, it may have saved my sanity at some points, but we're gonna have a bunch of stuff coming out together, and. He did the thing with me and Trippin. Like he he did some songs on that too, or he yeah. you know, he performed with us. It's just you know it's just fun, man. So so what all do you have in the works right now? I have a full length record coming out. Uh, not sure when. How many songs? Well, right now we've got like fifteen, and we're gonna narrow it down. Um, but I I may do more. I'm not sure because this was started at the beginning of COVID. And then I put out the record with Trippin' Roots, the so, the solo stuff with me and Brett, and then I sandwiched six more songs at the end to fit with that record. And there might be more that need to be on there. I'm not sure. I've changed the title a few times, and I've changed the single a few times. Um, you know, it's almost like the COVID slowdown really made a lot of people realize they don't have to – there's no time. Like, you don't have to be putting things out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So – I think it's going to take a little bit of time and I'm still honing in the performance of these songs and it's different. It's fun. There's some, I don't know how to describe it. It's not nothing like my other stuff, but it's still true to me and what I do. But uh, yeah, it'll be cool, man. There's gonna be like a couple of videos. We've already, like I told you the one with the alien, we haven't filmed it yet. We filmed two other videos already and it's all just going to, we're going to take a strategic rollout and, see how you know everything's changing yeah. music itself and and the way people present them i think uh i forgot who it was like ariana grande or something she had said something on the lines of i don't want to have to release a full record i want to just do something and that's what like a uh, prolific artist like little wayne or somebody did back in 2006 7 8 9 you know yeah. featured on a billion songs you don't have to wait for a whole record to do things anymore so I think it's just going to take some time, but this it's, it's finished. I got one more session of vocals and then it's just listening and trying to plan it. 
I'll send you some tracks. I think I sent you yeah, some man. tracks last time. Well, well, I'm I'm excited to hear it, man. And I know that no matter how long it is, it's going to be worth the wait. I appreciate it, man. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you. And for anybody that wants to check out the new the music that you do have out and then kind of anticipate everything that is to come, where do they go to do that? So you can go to Instagram. It's at Donnie K Bowling. Or you can go to my website, which is DonnieBowlingMusic.com. And that should have like videos on the front page and some other stuff. And of course, YouTube, like I have, I've neglected YouTube the last couple of months, but there will be like, like I said, like three or four videos coming up soon and hopefully some live performances and just, I'm, I might do a storytellers type of a, of a release where mm -hmm. I dig into the songs uh, in a controlled environment mm -hmm. and before the release or maybe even accompany it. Accompaniment. I can't even say that. Accompaniment. I hate. Oh, I can't. Accompaniment. Uh, you know. Accom accompaniment. Yeah, 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 that's it. Accompaniment. Yeah. I've had Where hell did it go? today. Well, man. Dude, right? And exactly. Wesley's uh, uh, TikTok killing me. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's his last name? I, he's I, like he's he's been doing like the. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I like him though. The other guy, um, he's been putting out TikToks and it's all like Hillbilly Day stuff. And I mean, Wesley Farmer. Oh, yeah, that Wesley. Okay. His, his TikTok about like Appalachian stuff is just killing me, man. You just remind me of it. He, he's a good one, man. And uh, apparently he's a musician as well. I hope to talk to that dude one day. Hey, he works over at uh, Mountain Music. So, oh. exchange. Yeah, drop in there and talk to him. Well, man. This podcast was everything and every anything that I wanted it to be. This was a lot of fun, man. And looking forward to next time, buddy. Have fun in the anthill, my friend. Have fun. And it's just nice to see you, man. Take care of yourself. See you later, man. And there we go, dude. Sense uh, uh, dude, it's, it trips me out that you can tell such a serious tone hits me when I start talking about crypto. It's yeah, like it it got it got pretty intense. It was kind of breaking up right there at the end. I'll do some editing around that and uh, all. Well, that. Yeah, yeah, it it. I know that you're mostly probably doing like short posts and stuff here and there. So it doesn't yeah, well, well, I do like the full interview, and then I, like the day afterwards, I post clips. And most time, I do like two of them, and yeah. generally like three to le less than ten minutes long. Yeah, you're fine, man. Don't worry about it. Man, I appreciate it. It's fun as usual. Yeah, dude, this is a lot of fun. I have to go take my wife to work, so I'm kind of having to hurry and head out. If it wasn't fun, I'd stick around and talk a little bit more. All right, man. Be good. Peace out. Hey, see you later, man. See I'll you, talk bro. Be safe. Later.